Our tradition in the Episcopal Church is to stand for the reading of the Gospel, so if you'll please stand. This is the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Mark. Glory to you. Jesus said to the Pharisees, But from the beginning of creation God made them male and female. For this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. People were bringing little children to him in order that he might touch them, and the disciples spoke sternly to them. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said to them, Let the little children come to me. Do not stop them, for it is such to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly, I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. And he took them up in his arms, laid his hands on them, and blessed them. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. This is uh, sort of my last chance to officially give uh, Andy and Amanda some, some last advice. Uh, of course, we've been talking for several months, so they've heard all of my good stuff already. Uh, but we want to think tonight, I think, about what's, what's really special about this time and this place that we're, that we're gathered together. And, and to do that, I, I wanted to uh, start by telling you a story of a, of a marriage that took place here some some years ago. The bride was named a Daisy Thorne, and the groom was a man named Joseph Gilbert. Daisy Thorne was a school teacher, and Joseph was a, a doctor. He had gone to medical school up at UT, and he was practicing in the Austin area. They had met each other when he was in medical school and had fallen in love and planned to get married once he graduated and began his practice. When they started to make their wedding plans, uh, Daisy knew that she wanted to get married in Galveston because Galveston was a favorite place of hers and she had friends and family here. And Joseph knew better than to argue with her. And so I assume that you know why Joseph decided to get married in, in Galveston, Andy. Anyway, as the date approaches, approached, um, Daisy came down to Galveston a little bit early to take care of some last minute plans. About the third day that she was on the island, they were talking about how the weather was really changing and a big storm was coming in. But the locals all told her, don't, don't worry, Galveston often gets wet and then the next day it, it dries out and, and the weather's clear. Everything will be just fine. So she decided to stay. But by the next day, on Friday, it was obvious that this was not any ordinary storm. She sought refuge in an apartment that was right down here on Broadway and 6th Street. At that time, it was called the Lucas Terrace. That night, Friday, September the 7th, 1900, began the worst hurricane in the history of this island. And also what is still the single worst natural disaster in the United States. Daisy had never been more afraid in her life. She recited the 23rd Psalm over and over as the night progressed and, and as the others gathered into her room because as they watched out the window, not only did the water rise and the debris come and, and hit against the buildings, all of the other apartments were one by one being knocked off. Miraculously, they survived. I saw a, a picture of the Lucas Terrace apartments on the on the internet, and, and all that is left of the whole apartment complex is this one room, actually. The first floor has debris up to the top of the first floor. Then there is the second floor, which the front has been blown off, and then there's this one bedroom standing out of that entire complex. News of the hurricane, of course, reached Joseph in Austin, and he was very worried, but the news traveled slowly in those days, and no one really knew what the extent of the damage and the devastation and the death were. Anyway, he used his doctor credentials to hurry down to Galveston and be on one of the first uh, rescue teams that came over to the island. 
And of course, on the way over, as he saw all those, those, uh, the, all of the devastation in the bay on his way over, his heart sank. He was horrified at everything that he saw and was sure that he probably would not find his fiance alive. But of course, they did meet each other. Daisy wrote later about that experience. She said, I feel that I've been given a marvelous blessing to have been brought so close to the infinite and to see how small, finite things really are. To be brought so close to the infinite as to be able to see how small the finite really is. As a symbol of that miracle and that blessing, they decided to go ahead with their wedding in Galveston. And they were married right here in Grace Church just five days later on September the 13th. Daisy came down this very aisle. It had six to eight inches of cake dried mud in it. The, the pews were sort of scattered around randomly. There were very few of her friends and family that could attend. But she and Joseph stood right here and said their vows. Said the same vows that you two will say in just a few minutes. And I tell you that story because in many ways you're connected to Joseph and Daisy. Like them, you, you chose to be married here when our church isn't looking quite its best and certainly the air conditioning's not working. <laughs> Theirs were the, was the, in fact the very first service that was held in this church after the worst hurricane in Galveston's history. And this is the very first service that we're having here since the second worst hurricane in Galveston's history. And that makes you part of a, of a lineage, part of that narrative, part of the history of this sacred space, this space that has been preserved by God and been preserved by the hard work of so many men and women, many of them that were here today trying to get things just right. This space which in Daisy's words remind us of the infinite among the finite and we see how small we are in comparison and that's what we're about tonight we're about inviting the infinite into your relationship we're, in, we're about inviting God to be part of what you two are doing tonight to join us in this place at this present time and be part of this in his infinite way and therefore, it's so important to, to use this night as, a, as an awesome beginning, as a place to remember how important it is to keep God in your relationship. You guys know what to do. We've, we've talked about it. You've had wonderful examples uh, from, your, from your family. You're not going to fail because you don't get it. You'll only fail if you begin to take things for granted, if you take each other for granted, if you take each other's love for granted, if you take the love of God for granted, woe are, woe are you both. So I pray that this night will remind you, and I pray that the, the story of Daisy and Joseph will remind you not to take anything for granted. Certainly don't take the love that you have for each other. It's a wonderful gift that you should cherish each and every day. And never take the love of God for granted either. Each day that we have is a blessing from God. And so please remember that. And I know that God will richly bless your new life together. Amen.